We was here a billion years for, and we were. But all this stuff you reading that they wrote in have been taken by white folks and they put a science to it and you believe it. Huh? You believe it. Killed Jesus on Good Friday and told a nigga like me to call it a good day. So I call it a good Friday and you do too. Hmm? Killed him on Friday. Huh? How many days did it take him to rise? Three. That's Saturday, Sunday, Monday and y'all don't know that. Hmm? Y'all talk about what y'all do. You ain't doing a damn thing but bullshit. I'm going to do it again. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. All over the world. It's called Easter Monday. The White House have the White House hunt on Monday. And y'all run around talking that crap to your children and talking shit to white, white folks. Know who you are. You don't know no white folks. Huh? White ain't a color, it's an attitude. And if you ain't got trillions of dollars in the bank, you can't have the attitude. Okay? And these crackers you around, they ain't white. You meet a white person, say, let's prove if you want. If you can't call the stock market on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and see to it it go up or come down, you ain't white. The real white folk can do that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. you saw the crap with the, with the, with the, the, the NBA. Basketball, the boy's wife told you the games are tricks. And you didn't believe it, but had that been a white boy on NBC, you'd have believed it. Huh? See how it works? You'd have believed it. All over America and all over the world, I go. And I don't hear none of you niggas talking about cops shooting your children in the back. You talking about Trump? And as messed up as he is, he ain't never shot a nigga in the back of the head. Huh? All y'all want to talk about is Trump. Uh, ignorant, crazy white boy. Yeah, okay. Excuse me, anybody who bought your car in the church across the street, you can't park there. You're um, going to need to move your car. You can park in the back where the bank is, back down, um, back down the street. What's that Wells Fargo back there? You got your car at the church, you got to move it. Whatever. Thank you. Thank you, baby. So somewhere. 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 What is fixing to go down in the next few days will change all of y'all's life and you don't feel nothing all you do is know how to make sweet potato pie huh? and when you stop and just think hmm? think hmm? you know the bible I know it God made Adam. Y'all know this story? Huh? And Adam said to God, I am what? Lonely. Huh? And when God didn't say, nigga, how can you be lonely when I ain't made nobody but you? <laughs> no, you laugh. You the fool. Huh? How can you be lonely? Huh? When I ain't made but one person, you buy into that, and you niggas think y'all here ready to take over. See, they ready to take over nothing. Huh? The white boy's coming here right now and say, all oh, you niggas that don't leave, I'll kill. I know I'm going to die. You niggas will say you will die, but I know you. You run out of here so damn fast, you'll leave your car. Huh? Huh? Okay. Hillary, that thug winch. But y'all love her. Huh? And you no, no, I don't need y'all. I know who you are. My mama told me Santa Claus was a white boy and she was buying the toys. So I've been with you for a long time. But now when you niggas get the bull garden and talking your crap, huh? Then it changes. A black man in America is the only man on the planet that look at you and say you a strong sister and that don't bother you 
because the quackers say, if you don't look like a white woman, you can't be beautiful. But I see something there that God put in you, but I can't call it, so I call it strong. But refer to my automobile as beautiful. And that don't bother you? That don't bother you? Black men go to war, Korea, Vietnam, come back with their leg missing, and the Vietnamese that shot your leg off, nigga, can come and open up a store on the corner where you live and you can't open up one. And y'all want to sit here with these ignorant niggas and talk shit like you know. So you don't. You don't. Look at that mess in Baltimore. Huh? And y'all tolerate it? Tolerate it? The police chief? They brought in here from Oakland? Black man? Huh? The mayor was a shoe-in for re-election. And then they flashed some pictures on him. She didn't run. And the black police chief stepped down. And y'all don't feel nothing? Showed y'all some old trashy-ass black woman out there hitting her son. Time magazine put her on the cover and said she'd probably be the mother of the year. Then they found out she had five different babies with five different white men and you ain't seen that one since. And you live here and don't know what went down. Always like gossip, but the truth you can't handle. Huh? All them niggas out there marching and one of the fine minds, the fine minds, Huh? It's Billy Murphy. But he ain't nothing but a piece of doo-doo. Because, no, no, hear me. Everything them judges said when they let them crackers go, he agreed with it. Huh? You hear me? But that don't bother y'all. Huh? I know it. I know how bright he is. Only nigga went to MIT and chemical engineer. Then came back here and started playing drugs and ran for mayor. And they whipped him down to a piece of it. Okay? And that don't bother you. Huh? A black woman called the police and said, that was my son crashing that police car. And she carried him to the police station and they set that boy's bond higher than all six cops. And that didn't bother you niggas. Huh? Mama turned him in. Somebody fix this for me. Mama turned him in. I ain't got no problem with that. Huh? But they sit the bail. And all you niggas, especially you niggas that call yourself leaders, the church to the put up the bail, you know the nigga ain't going nowhere. Huh? And then y'all got nerve enough to want to be happy. Huh? Where's Reggie? Reggie? My friend. Where? No. Tell him, come out here. Reggie, my good friend. Hmm. I had him. My wife called him and said, I'm coming over for Brother Paul's funeral. Would you pick me up at the train station? All right? I'm not driving because I know two hours after the funeral, hell won't break loose. Huh? And you niggas live here and didn't know it. Why did it take two hours to make sure that the world press finished filming the funeral so they could tell the world about you ignorant thugs? Huh? What they didn't tell the world is something you didn't know. Those children came from the high school. And that bus let them off every morning. Huh? In that shopping mall, nigga. And they be, you believe in the world. These niggas went over there to trash. They went there to get their bus. Hear me. Hear me, y'all. I don't need y'all to clap. Truth don't have to be validated by some folks that don't even know it. Hear what I'm saying. They let the school out an hour early. Huh? Baby, I don't need y'all to talk. Huh? Huh? 
Y'all know a piece of bullshit. I'm fixing to tell you all of it. Huh? I'm with the man's number one man. She didn't know the schools were going to shut down an hour early. If you niggas just shut up. If you're a brain surgeon, I don't know nothing about it. If you talking, I'll shut up. You niggas go to Harvard, Yale, and them white racists talking to you and you won't open up your mouth but you come here a nigga that can put my life in your liberation and you don't know I don't need you to tell me a damn thing mm. nothing alright but y'all always want to be talking and woofing and bullshitting and you don't know nothing huh nothing so hear me now the man was not told that the schools were going to be let out an hour early. The bus company that picks up the children had not told them. So that means the children was there for an hour and no buses. Hmm? No buses. The mayor didn't know. Huh? Some of you young folks that came out seven years ago, there was a movie called The Nickel Ride. Any of y'all see it? You did. Or, or did you? I'm sorry. Did you raise your hand? You saw it? Okay. Y'all need to go see it. Seven years ago it came out. It's about Baltimore. And they're killing cops. And if you have somebody you won't kill, you send them here to fake like a job, and the cops will bust them and put them in one of them wagons and did what they did to the brother. They know that all over the world except you. Okay? All that except you. And then you walk around. I look after, sorry for the Muslims here. They come out and cool everything down. But these crackers and your leadership here have never demanded NBC to put them on TV. Mm. Huh? They there. Huh? Y'all don't bring them nowhere to speak. The niggas don't do no drugs. They don't sell no drugs. Huh? They just there. They don't ask you for nothing. And if, miss, if somebody was chasing you down the street, and you saw a cop on that corner, huh? Preachers and leadership on this corner, and the Muslims standing there. If you had any sense, you'd run to the Muslims. Because they're not going to mess with you. Huh? But now y'all going to sit around and talk all that crazy bullshit. Huh? All that crazy talk. Huh? Somewhere. God made you. Not Sears and Roebuck, not the Catholic Church, the Baptist Church. I ain't got nothing against them. I've been going to the Baptist Church all my life. And then I found out something with it. The richest Christians in America is the rich white Republicans. DuPont, Mellon, huh? Kennedy ain't got no money. That's nigger stuff. Mellon. Huh? Rockefeller. You ain't never seen them with a cross on. You ain't never seen nobody but poor, ignorant niggas and white wearing a cross because you got to convince somebody you're a Christian when you know you ain't nothing. No Christian that believe in the real God would let a cracker put you in slavery. <laughs> All right? What you do, you sit and tell your children a bunch of bullshit. Children don't hear what you mean, they hear what you say. And when you tell a child you got to be twice as smart as a white, that child hear you saying they stupid. Huh? If you don't believe it, check out the researcher at, 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 at UCLA. They know you, you think they don't know you? Let me tell you something. If some of you young folks would get together and get in a car, with that, what's that thing tell you where you're going? GPS. GPS. Old folks, listen.
to that white woman. She's in Australia. She makes a million dollars a day. Hmm? Some niggas sued her in St. Louis and they settled for $80 million because she was sending white folks around the ghetto. And some of them went and got a real lawyer, not a sellout nigga like this nigga here. And they settled for $80 million. Hmm? When that alligator ate that little boy, huh? and you niggas was talking about, well, she had no business leaving him there. You always want to blame you. Huh? Disneyland have just settled for a hundred million dollars, nigga. Because white folks said, how come you didn't have some signs up here? How come you didn't have this fixed better? Well, a child couldn't crawl in it. You come up with that nigga crap and blame. And boy, did y'all see her husband the other night. Three nights ago, you know the stuff happened like six weeks ago. Did y'all see her husband say it was two alligators? If you did, just raise your hand. Huh? And one of them bit me. Now this cracker come up six weeks later and said it was another alligator that nobody saw and the alligator bit me and he'll get a check while your ignorant ass better to blame it on the mother. Huh? And you don't understand that. Huh? I'm nine years old, my mother found out I didn't believe in saying the blessing. Why? The blessing. The Indians taught us Thanksgiving. And none of you corrupt, insane thugs ever pray for Indians on Thanksgiving Day. Thousands of, hundreds of thousands of niggas ran away from slavery and went to the Indian reservation and the Indians let them in and dad white folks to come. Hmm? And you niggas in love with the Washington red skins. Huh? And got nerve enough to try to come in here and sit and act like you ready for some action. You ain't ready for nothing to go home and eat you a pork chop. Hmm? Hmm? All that crap you talking about. Well, I, I, I got to protect my children. Go home tonight and take out your Christian Bible. Hmm? I didn't know King James was king of England. All them niggas in my house believe, had me believe that God sent him here to write the Bible. I didn't know King James was such a weird, strange homosexual. He hated women so bad he killed his mother and his loving was Lord Buckingham who Buckingham Palace named that. No. Okay. All right. Again. Them children didn't come from you. They came through you, nigga. Huh? And you don't even understand that. Don't even understand that. Walk around with them evil looks on your face. You ain't doing You get downtown with white people, you need to be smiling. A black father will say to his son, nigga, this is my house, I'll kill you. Anytime you say that to your son in your house, you ain't nothing but a piece of doo-doo. You don't mess with nobody that'll mess with you back. I ain't heard none of y'all talking about drug pushers, because you know they'll kill you. But you talk about your boys walking down the street with their pants below their butt. Well, let me tell you something. The folks that killed Jesus didn't have their pants below their butt for 2,000 years. The priest and the Pope and them ripping off little boys' booty, they didn't have their pants below their butt. These cops that's blowing your children away, they don't have their pants. And the mafia is immaculate and a piece of filth. Y'all don't talk about them. So somebody called me on the radio show, it's Mr. Gregory. What do you think about our children? Don't call them our children. They're your children. Huh? Walking around with their pants, I said, I can't complain. Why? Because the people that killed Jesus Christ didn't have their pants below their butt. 
the priests with the Pope's knowledge been ripping off little boys' booty for 2,000 years and they don't have their pants below their butt, but you ain't gonna say nothing about them. Huh? Look at them cops out there that kill black folk. They don't wear their pants below their butt. Nigga, you ain't nothing but a bunch of ungodly punks. God sent you here to heal the planet and you come here and join them. Huh? You come here and join them. And don't you think you ain't gonna pay? You're not dealing with the Catholic Church or the Muslim Church or the Seventh-day Adventist. You're dealing with the God that created the whole universe. You can't buy that God off, nigga, with a chicken leg. You can't buy that God off with drug money. Okay? So when you stand in that line, whatever it is, you'll be in the same line the Ku Klux Klan and them nigga-hating slave owners will be in. And don't be surprised. You'll be surprised because you eat Huh? When I'm in your belly, there's a thing called the mother tongue. Y'all ever heard of it? Huh? That's you and your mother talking to one another. Ain't no father tongue. Okay? Just the mother tongue. And if we leave here tonight and go to a Chinese restaurant, when you put your order in, they talking Chinese. But English to you. And when they get through taking your order, while they waiting for it to come out, they talk in Chinese. Go to the Italian <coughs> place where you get your car fixed. They'll ask you what's wrong with your car in English, but while they working on it, they talking Italian. So when your children get a certain education, you tell them you can't talk like that, you won't get there. You just told them to stop talking the language that God gave them, nigga. Huh? Because you scared. You're going to pay for that. And it's right around the corner. Huh? I was in Russia last week, and they said, how'd you know next year this time 50% of everybody in America probably be dead? Huh? You can feel it. You can feel it. Huh? But what I'd like for you to do is get in the car that got one of them systems and give them the address where you're going and they'll take you right there. That's where we are with technology. And you think you will mess with this white boy? <laughs> you think you never going to mess with this white boy? With the technology they got, they forced to pass Hitler. Huh? You don't understand technology. For 20 years, they got a train that runs underground from California to New York in 48 minutes. And you niggas think you, you don't know nothing. You like a bunch of Jews in Germany, at least they knew they wasn't in charge. Hmm? The Mexicans come over here and you say they took our job. You ignorant nigga. You didn't have a job before they got you. You in the white union paying them money and they won't even let you take certain apprenticeship. You say whatever you want to say about the Mexicans. Black folks made America. The Chinese did the railroad. Huh? Mexico was made by Mexicans in Mexico. Okay? They didn't need no And Mexico City is one of the fine cities on the planet. So you can find you some Mexicans can't read or write, but they know how to work them big cranes. You don't. You can find some Mexicans that ain't never had no education, but the whole system in Mexico City was put together by Mexicans. So what job did they take from you? You always want to blame somebody instead of blaming the real people because you know they'll hurt you. Hmm? If somebody's raping a woman and I'm holding their hand so they can do it, I can never be arrested for rape, but I have violated some law. And you black folks are fixing to find that out. You have violated the law just being here with this thug, paying your taxes, 
walking around with that ignorant look on you and call you a Christian? You got to wear a cross because it don't show. Huh? Y'all talk about voter registration. Fifty years ago, the voting rights bill was passed. Predominantly black folks, predominantly old folks, predominantly women and children, but they don't show you that. Fifty years ago. So if you was 30, 50 years ago, you 80 now. You don't walk as fast. You pee more regular than you used to, but they're going to tell you to go vote. Your memory's messed up. You think you already voted this morning. Huh? <laughs> Somebody should be there. And when the Democrats lost the Senate Congress, because them niggas went there mooching money. Huh? And didn't ask them to give us $200 million so we can get buses. So we can pick up people at their home. In November, it's cold in a lot of places. Y'all don't understand that. Huh? Al Sharpton is the most powerful black man in America. They don't give a damn about what you think. Powerful. Because why? Five days a week he had a show on the white network. Five days a week he had a show on Kathy Hughes. So powerful. Every time something happened with a nigga and a cop in New York, they go get out to cool it. Huh? And then when the Pope come to this country, and the only place he went to black was the school in Harlem, and they didn't invite Al. They told him to get the hell out of town. And that don't bother you? That didn't bother you? It didn't bother the folks that's in his organization? Huh? Something's wrong. All you want is some glamour. <laughs> Entertainers. And athletes. Are you crazy? Any of y'all live in Washington know two weeks ago the second biggest jazz festival in America is the one at Kennedy Center. Huh? It lasted a whole week. They had all of us pictures. I don't even like jazz. They never brought a jazz band. Got a lot of black friends. I don't care that much about them. So when I walk on stage, if you saw the advertising where all of our pictures, Bill, Dick Gregory, sold out six months ago. Okay? I walked on stage, and let me tell you jazz folks something. You ain't nothing. Huh? Y'all always talking about Miles Davis and, and black jazz men. Hmm? Nina Simone cussed out a whole state. You un no, no, you ungrateful dogs. She called, said, Mississippi, goddamn, you ain't heard Miles Davis or none of them black men say nothing. All right? Billy Holiday from Baltimore. Before the Depression, she talked about white men lynching black men from trees. Nigga, not one black jazz person, man, that said anything. You have the same priority as this cracker cut, except they know it and you don't. Okay, that's what this is about. Huh? So you want to dress up in your bullshit, huh? And do this and do that. Why you think you have to look good? Because they convince you you don't. Hmm? What's your name, brother? Huh? Harry? Larry. Anthony? Larry. Larry, okay. So if your brother is the best dentist in town, Jim, in Baltimore, and you in a restaurant, across from his office, and you see me walking there holding my jaw, you assume I'm going in there because what? Have a toothache, right? A black woman in America is the only woman that go to a beauty parlor so people all over the world, somebody convince you you ugly. All over the world is called a hair salon. Huh? The white boy convinced me you ugly and convinced you you ugly. Huh? If I carried you in a gorilla tonight to the zoo, 
and picked up and went to where God is, God would cry. Because God know he made the one that know gorilla, but he don't know where you come from. Gorilla ain't got no print, purple, green hair. Girl ain't wearing them old high heel shoes. Listen, you black women wake up in the morning, look in the mirror and say, what can I put on to make myself look bad? And then you do it. Ooh, huh? you got a fine booty, sister. A booty God made where the doo-doo is. So how that going to be? A oh, ooh, you want it? That's what it's made for. Huh? A gorilla got a big ass and don't nobody think that's something to freak out. That's, and you go home the night, take a knife and stick yourself in the butt and see if shit don't come out. Not diamonds. Huh? Huh? But you put on your high heel shoe and switch in your garden stick. And you say it. No other woman on the planet go to a place called a beauty parlor. How can these crackers make me think you ugly and make you think you ugly and you don't even know what you're doing? Huh? That's what this game is. Hmm? I, why do I do black folks like this here? Because you made me. Hmm? I'm living in Chicago with a wife and family, making $5 a night, three nights a week. Hmm? Three nights a week. And you listen to me when I wasn't even funny. And when you got to listen to me, you pushed me all the way downtown where you couldn't afford to see me. That's why I come back to say thanks to you. Huh? Thanks to you. White folks didn't make me. You made me. Huh? Michael Jackson and all of them thugs, and he my bosom friend. Y'all go buy all this and he got bodyguard. Them niggas will push you away. I've always been listed in the phone book. Huh? When Kennedy cut off the food stamps in Mississippi to stop the voter registration. Kennedy, the one you niggas like. Huh? Huh? Kennedy, I went in and shipped seven tons of food every two weeks by plane to Mississippi and messed them up so bad they had to cut it off. Y'all don't know that I don't need to be validated by a bunch of ignorant black folks. If my mama was alive, she would call the police if she heard what I was saying. That's who raised me. And one day when they found out I didn't say the blessing, my mother pulled my ears, I didn't know it. I looked around and saw it, I said, bitch, are you crazy? <laughs> now before you holler, ooh, hear the story out. She said, what would you call me? I said, I called you a bitch. She said, how old are you? I said, I'm nine years old. Where you hear that? I hear daddy call you that all the time. And you ain't never pulled his ears. Touch my ears again, you better have an on. This old drunken, ignorant nigga is one of the top ten cooks in the world. When that nigga get off the boat in London, he got to report to Buckingham Town. But we don't see none of that benefit. Huh? And then five hours later, I hear you and that punk in the bedroom making strange sounds. Then she asked, well, I love you. You don't love me. I've had a paper route. Since I was seven years old, I get up every morning at four o'clock. In St. Louis, sometime in the winter time, when I walk out that house to go to my paper route, it's 10 below zero. Sometime in the summertime, it's five. Five above. Tell me you love me and you let a little child go out at that age. I don't want to hear it. Tell it to them other niggas that'll believe your shit. But I tell you, I'll make a deal with you. I'm a better thief than you, mama. If you come down in the basement and pray over what I stole, I'll come up here and pray over what you stole. See, mama, I'm a better thief than you. I just can't justify mine with prayer. Hmm? I've been like this all my life. Okay? Ready to die if I have to. Ain't going to kill nobody. Ain't going to steal nothing. And ain't going to lie to you. Especially you niggas ain't got no money. Why I lie to you? Huh? And if y'all would just go home tonight and find the real God. I've always went to church. 
church ain't God. Queen Elizabeth makes three hundred and sixty million dollars every twenty-four hours, just interest on her money. Huh? Ball up your fist for me, Mary. Now, you ball up your fist, and Queen Elizabeth balled up her fist. The same God made yours, made hers. Huh? So what you talking about, Queen Elizabeth? Huh? God made women and men made queens. God made men and men made kings. The difference between a woman and a queen and a man is the way you wrap the gift. God ain't had nothing to do with that. Huh? Oh, I say, oh, sister, you're so beautiful. Let me run down the street and get you some gifts. So I go to Target and get you some cheap stuff. But stop by Sackcliffe Avenue and have them change the labels. And then go to Neiman Marcus and have it wrap it. And then you think I love you. It's the way I wrap the gift. I don't love you. And when y'all understand that, huh? The Lord's Prayer, our Father. You think God, who created the whole universe, yelled down here and said, I'm a man? But he ain't told you he made the sun, the moon, the stars, and all the water in the ocean. Some cracker did that. Huh? And then they convince you when you call them that it's racist. Cracker. There's no way you can look at that word. Huh? Use your intelligence. Huh? Now, they got folks killing Christians. They run up to you and say, are you a Christian? I give them a choice, whatever you want me to be. <laughs> you niggas talk about Jesus, but scared to say you a Christian. Huh? And you think you going somewhere? Huh? You think you going somewhere? You take your children to Disneyland this summer to see a rat. But have never carried him to King's grave or King's tomb. And had he not died, you wouldn't be welcome in Disneyland. You ignorant niggas don't even know him. Huh? Want to sit there and act like a man and a woman. Your children know because this intelligence came from the universal God. Hmm? What's your name, miss? Can, did you have a best friend when you was a little girl? Did you know her name? What was her name? See, see a best friend. Hmm? Your mama paid the rent or the house note. They bought the car. They paid for you to go to school. But they wasn't your best friend because the universal intelligence said they ain't shit. They lie. They'll tell you to go tell the bill collector you ain't they ain't there. Anytime you tell a child to lie for you, they'll lie to you. Huh? They know who you are. Huh? That's why you ever thought, how come you can't be their best friend? You pay for everything. But they know you ain't doing nothing but bullshit. Because they hear you through that real intelligence. Easter, one year it comes in March. Another year it comes in April. Y'all so ignorant. On your white folk too. You can't die in two different months. Huh? You can't die in two different months. But that don't mean nothing to you as long as the white folks is running it down. Hmm? All over the world, Easter is determined by the planets. Easter is the first Monday after the first new moon, after the first full moon, after the spring equinox. You don't even know that. That's why one year it comes in March and another year it comes in April. Huh? Easter is a Latin word, it means Esther. It means fertility. It's a sexual thing. That's why the symbol is a rabbit and an egg. Huh? The rabbit for two reasons. There's nothing on this planet that has a bigger litter than rabbits. Huh? 
Rabbit is the only thing born with their eyes open. Now listen to me. Easter is the first Monday after the first full moon. Look at the full moon and then look at a rabbit's eyes. You're looking at a full moon, nigga. You don't even know it. Huh? You don't even know it. Fertility. So when white folks came in and wanted to use it, huh? They had to die themselves. Huh? That's why you got to die. Huh? And then the chase started. That's a sex thing. That's why in the, in, 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 at the White House, they call it the Easter egg hunt. If me and five of you guys go out to hunt some booty, it's called hunting some booty. And you niggas don't even know it. Hmm? And it don't take you long to know it because I grew up just as ignorant as you with an ignorant mama. Huh? Talking all that crazy talk. Huh? Go to work for white folks and they didn't even respect them. And don't you think white folks don't know who you are? Hmm? Don't you think they don't know who you are? Why? Nobody in the history of this planet have ever went through what black folks have in America. And yet, they couldn't break that real God consciousness in you. That's why they let you feed their children. That's why they let you watch their children. They go anywhere in the world and let you watch. But I treat you so nasty, I can see that love that God gave you. You can see it, but them crackers can. Huh? You ever thought about who you are, that they raped you, they did all kind of things, but they let you watch their babies, they let you cook for them, and y'all ain't even figured that out. Oh, you want to do some of these old punk ass niggas to go to some white school and play football. That's all. Make money. How come 10 of them you can't put together and see a factory they opened? Huh? How come? Now you niggas know about brain damage, but you still suck enough to send your children and let them get messed up. That's how chicken nothing you are, because you want them to be somebody. You don't know when they came here, the universal God made all of us somebody. Huh? You hear me? that weak class. They don't even This is who you are. And when you leave here tonight, you can be that. Huh? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, whole, eight, nine. There are nine planets to the universe, the number of God is nine, and you niggas don't even know that. God made the sun, made your ears, and you're going to hang some shit on it? Huh? You gonna try to change what God made? Huh? You pay for it. Look at the rich, rich, rich white women. They wear it, but they have clamps, no holes. Hmm? You put on them tight shoes. And then go home and say, well, oh, I can't tell you how bad my feet hurt. And once you take your shoes off, your feet stop hurting. Nigga, it's obvious it's the shoes. <laughs> You don't have to go to no damn doctor. You take your shoes off, your feet stop hurting. You put them back on, they start it back again. A black woman. Jabari knows whenever he called me, he had to get me through my wife. I know who you black women are. Nobody can get me. You saw Kathy Hughes. Unsound hero. They got film how the president can't get to me without going through her. That's who you are. Huh? That's when you become a queen. Huh? Not with what you got on. Huh? That's the you. What's that old cracker boy's name that wanted to be a woman? <laughs> Who's Jimmy? If he was an ugly man, you know he going to be an ugly woman. And evidently he must didn't like it. He's talking about changing back.
a black woman in America is the only woman on the planet, hear me sister, that can take a butter knife and cut that nigga's ties to the rim. Hmm? You don't go to school for it. You ain't never trained. You ain't never discussed it with your girlfriend. You just ask that nigga who is Melba. <laughs> and that nigga went off. So while you drawing his bath water, he talking to Melba. Let me tell you my wife. Huh? And when the nigga go out to get in his car or his truck, all the ties been cut to the rail. <laughs> And you didn't hire nobody. You didn't call no white folks. You did it yourself. And we don't know who you are. Huh? I make millions of dollars. I ain't never had a bank account. Lillian gets it all. Because I know who she is. Huh? Y'all got to worry about is that nigga giving me all his money? Hmm? This is what this is about. How many of y'all remember when the government gave me the most vicious form of cancer in the history of the planet, okay? The government. I got a son that's a doctor in this Marvin State. He looks at the report. I said, don't let your mother see that because she's a little flaky. Wait till your sister get married. Then I carried her the report. And she said, I can't believe the government did this. I said, why are you crying? You think I'm going to leave this booty back here and my money for your high school sweetheart? I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> so you go in the backyard and come back with a smile on your face or I'm getting out of here. Yeah? I know who you are, but you don't know who I am. And I got this way because I know who you are. Huh? Y'all crazy. And so I'm on the Joe. Joe. Madison show. Y'all get it over here. He said I was talking to Gabe Gregory the other day. And he told me about a prayer he said that night. After I told my wife, don't come in here not smiling. White folks didn't make you. The same God that made the universe made you. They got to get through that God to get me. Huh? So I went in the backyard and I prayed to God like God was my friend. You niggas pray to God like you ain't never met God. Oh, God, please. You don't have to plead for nothing. God made you, nigga. If something's wrong on you, got to do is that. And you can't pray twice for the same thing. If I ask this brother, man, I left my wallet at the hotel in Baltimore. I need $10 till tomorrow. You say yes. I'm not supposed to ask you no more. At that point, I'm in a prayer of Thanksgiving. You niggas don't even know how to pray. Huh? You so sure you won't get it. You don't have to pray again. So I went into the backyard, the farm, and I said to God, Hey, champ, <laughs> boy, did you really mess up? God said you're supposed to forgive a person how many times? Seven times seven, right? But you niggas gonna let these white folks tell you that if you go Die, God is going to kill you with fire. How come he don't forgive? Are y'all crazy? Hmm? Y'all crazy? God is a jealous God. Do you know more American men and women die every year from jealousy? And you going to tell me God is a jealous God and that cracker that made you believe that? Or what food? Somewhere. I went to Muhammad Ali's funeral. Huh. But they came from all over the world. Huh. You hear me? 
all over the world. What did he do? I guess it was something in Allah. Wait a minute, what do you mean? Ali started off a little ignorant thug in Louisville, Kentucky. Never been to a good school. And had Malcolm not introduced him to Islam. You would have never heard of him. And then something happened to him that was tragic. His daddy. Y'all know about the bicycle? His daddy brought him a bicycle for his birthday. And somebody stole it that day. Well, let me tell you something. You, black folks, made me to the... I never had to get my child a bike for birthday. Bikes ain't made for birthday. Bikes ain't made for Christmas. It's when your poor ass, niggas and white folk ain't got no money. You got to look for an excuse. Y'all fixed it so I never had to look for an excuse. The daddy would like to get a bike to be here today. Huh? Daddy, I'd like to get a skate to be here today. That's what you all did for me. I didn't get it at home. You. And if they run in here with all kind of guns while y'all running, I'd be right here. Hmm? Right here. Clinton, him and that winch, they might go to jail next week. Why? Because that $300 million they took up for Haiti, not one quarter had been spent on Haitians. Huh? But you niggas lack, you know what I mean? A stone dog. Yes. Huh? Yes. And he works. He's the one that passed the legislation for niggas to go to jail. But y'all forget that. Mm. I never thought I'd see the day. I pray to God that if I come back, make me a white boy. <laughs> Why? Why? They're the luckiest. Now, all the stuff they've done to us, when they get the first black president, they get a nigga that don't cuss. They get a nigga ain't call him a cracker or a honky. How lucky can you be? Huh? I'll be 85 this year, all my life. Only twice have I seen somebody go over the White House since. Huh? He's in, them crackers go every day. And young niggas, you laugh. Huh? They got dogs there. How come they don't turn off the dogs? Huh? They got snipers on the roof. How come they ain't never shot one of them? Huh? Huh? But that don't bother you. So I ran for president in 1968. No, no, no. Oh, wait, let me finish. Had I been president of the United States, and them crackers been coming over the fence, I hold a press conference called Honky News. <laughs> that means you niggas don't even listen. Now, say, now let me tell you white folks something. I said no longer will you have to jump over the fence. As of 12 noon tomorrow, I'm inviting you Honky. Matter of fact, you can come at 6.30 in the morning. I'll have ladders out there to help you over. Bring your family, your children. Because I just ordered 3,000 cannibals from New Zealand to eat your ass up. Huh? Now y'all come on. Huh? And wash your butt. Because they don't like eating dirty white folks. Clean yourself up. I can guarantee you, all the guards are going to be sent home. In the morning, you can come for lunch, you can come for dinner. You won't have to climb over nothing. Just come on, honky. Come on. You think these crackers that's supposed to guard me ain't guarding me? I don't need them. I got me some cannibals, nigga. That will eat you up. 
eat your little children. Huh? And I know you white folks love dogs. They'll eat your dog. That's what this is about. He went to Africa. And then he did something I was really surprised. He went out to the old neighborhood. Did y'all see that yet? Huh? To look up his family tree. He got there, them niggas were still living in the tree. Pirates in Somalia was taking them ships. Well, y'all crazy enough to believe the white folk got the mightiest navies in the history of the planet. Them niggas in Somalia, they don't have two rowboats, but they're going to stop the navy. And y'all buy that? Huh? Somewhere. All you got to do is throw that out your head. If I bring you my car and you a mechanic, and I come back and get it, and it's the same shape, right? I'm going to blame you. You niggas send your children to school, and they don't know how to read or write, and you blame them and not the teacher. Them niggas didn't go to school knowing how to read. This winch is paid to teach them, but they don't have to teach them, and you blame the children. Huh? And you don't even understand that. And so this brother here cares enough to get a place like this here. You didn't have to get wet tonight. I think the nigga crazy. Hmm? I really think he crazy. Because hmm? I just saw some ordinary niggas with a wife and a family that cares enough about you to give you real information. Huh? On the radio today, Muhammad and I, one of the fine radio minds on the planet. <laughs> when you listen to him, you don't have to hear nothing else. So somewhere. Now, I want to do two things. If there's any white folks in here, I'd like for you you have to be over six foot five. Hmm? I'd like for you to come up. And then look and see if you see the, the paper with the, the gorilla on the front. Just, did you see it? I might have didn't bring it. It might not be there. But if you see it. Hmm? Just look through all of it. You'll see the gorilla be winking at you. Hmm? Now, hear this. I am five foot nine. If you bring a white boy up here that's six foot ten and stand him next to me, my legs come up to his titty nipple. Why? White folk got short legs and long bodies. Black folk got long legs and short bodies. A gorilla got short legs and long bodies. If me and three white boys got naked and pulled off our clothes, which one of us with the gorilla you think got hair all over their body? The gorilla and the three white boys. But they convince you that you look like a more gorilla. And if you look at the gorilla, go to the zoo tomorrow and look at the gorilla's lips. They thin as razor blades. But yet still they convince you. That cracker, look at that ape and gorilla and see himself. But then he want to make like it's you. Then y'all buy into it. Huh? Something's wrong. Y'all buy into it. And now, the other thing is, I'd like to get two white folks. Because I'm fixing to open me up a black business. A black airline. And I need to get two white boys so I can qualify for the minority loan. <laughs> hmm? 
I can't get them with you. I need two white folks to go down to get my minority loan. And when I open up my airline, they're going to be like most of you niggas. You're going to hide the name so white folks don't know it's you. They're going to know this nigga got an airline because it's going to be named Tamika Air. <laughs> and my motto is we leave late, but we get you there on time. I want to know why you niggas always get to work late because the later I get there the longer I keep my human dignity and the earlier I get off the quicker I get it back home <laughs> when any of y'all ever come to see Dick Gregory 98% of my audience is white folks how many of y'all know that 98% because they know what I'm telling is the truth, but under that, they can't feel no hatred. You niggas always gonna tell some nigga, nigga, I'll kill you and wonder why you got caught. <laughs> Show up in some green shoes, purple hat, red top, and wonder how they caught you. And so I just want you to know that there will be a black airline, Tamika Air. And we'll guarantee white folk you'll never lose no luggage because we ain't going to let you bring none on. <laughs> and all this crap about, you've been on the plane, right, brother? You know they make the, anything happen at the airport, you can blame that on white folks. The airport is 99.9% .9 white folks. Now I tell white folks, if you're angry with Greyhound, bring it to me. Greyhound is 99.9% .9 black folks. Hmm? And the white folks, they need to come to Greyhound while we hang out. They make them white folks walk four to five blocks to get on the plane. That's why they have so many heart attacks. <laughs> Greyhound know you ain't gonna tell. Greyhound bring that bus up to your toe. Huh? <laughs> the bags get ripped off. Three blocks before you get to the terminal, they say we have an announcement. All the bags got ripped off in Memphis, so don't go to the lost and found. Your bags will not be there. Somewhere, somewhere, you have to know who you are. You got to look at these little punk ass children you raised and wonder why they look so sad. Huh? They ain't gonna mess with white folks. Huh? They're not gonna mess with white folks. God, I got in town yesterday and my wife said to me, the biggest news, Turkey. Y'all see the news? Yeah. They overthrew Turkey. And I'm on the radio. And I say they'll have it back by tomorrow morning. Didn't it? Yeah. Why? They got a drug over there. They've been feeding the army for thousands of years. Called gunning. And that's what they put in your nigga neighborhood. And you wonder why these crazy niggas want to kill everybody. Gunning will make you kill your mother. But you so frightened to believe that something come out of your belly will do that. That's how ignorant you are. Huh? It's called gunman, and you stupid enough to buy drugs from the great-grandson of the slave owner. But you don't trust me with nothing. You don't trust her with nothing, but that cracker you do. And wonder who you are? Hmm? Today, they announced that Michigan sent 2,000 cops in the Cleveland for the convention. Oh, do they know something? Hmm? They got tanks there. Hmm? Okay. Trump, with his ignorant self, without understanding, be crazy. 
And if you crazy and kill everybody in this room, you can't get the lectures yet because crazy people have privileges. And that's why they let that little honky do anything he want to do. And y'all stupid enough to believe he's rich. He ain't never had. He don't even look like a cracker with no money. Huh? He don't even look like it. And all he's doing is what George Wallace did when he came north. Appeal to all them crackers that ain't never like niggas and you think they do. Hmm? I don't know how many of y'all remember. You older folks remember that in 1961, I'm not talking about Tuskegee Institute. I'm talking about the city of Tuskegee. Did y'all know they had a black mayor? Anybody? Huh? Thank you, ma'am. You know his name was John Ford? You know he's married to a white woman. The white woman was George Wallace's sister's daughter. Huh? That's how easy you niggas can be tricked. Huh? George Wallace's sister's daughter, that nigga was married in 1961, and you walk around thinking you know something. You don't know nothing. Huh? I've been with you. I know you. The God say you need sweetness in your life. The God is talking about human dignity. You think they're talking about a damn Pepsi Cola and some Kool-Aid. You say, well, I, I ain't never seen white folks treat a, a black person. Oh, no, come on. Don't blame that just on Republicans. You know better than that. Huh? Condoleezza Rice had more PhDs than Bush's whole cabinet than they called that wench Condi. Huh? They didn't call her doctor. They called Kissinger a murdering thug, Dr. Henry Kissinger. They call Maddie all right, Dr. Albright. So I bumped into that. And I said, why you let them white folks don't call you by your title? Oh, it don't bother me, it should. I know a soda pop blacker than you. It's called Dr. Pepper, nigga. <laughs> And you go to the store and ask for a pepper, they give you a chili pepper. Hmm? It's a game. You always don't mind something until it comes to family. You want to yell at the children. You want to talk shit to somebody. It don't work. Hmm? It don't work. And so when you go home, listen to the real, the real God. Hmm? When I walked in tonight, had it been a sassling in here, I could have picked it up. Something you do with your hands, I could kill them, which is a violation. Or I could neutralize them. We all had that power. Hmm? What's your birthday, dear? That's the day you was born. No, no, the day. The day. Well, ho, 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 just the day you born on the 8th. Anybody know her? Anybody? I mean, here. Huh? Darren? Did he know how smart you are? You got. Well, I didn't, I didn't want to get no damn. I said, do anybody here know you? Or you tell me about some nigga on the phone. Do you know how smart you are? And it didn't come from no white folks. The God gave you that. What month you born? January. January. You've been going through a whole lot of changes in the last four months because January is the sun. And the sun been exploding. And that's what you feel, but it's fixing to cool out. Okay? okay. We're born. See, you walk and know who you are, but you niggas don't. Because you listen to this white boy stuff. The 8th. January. What year? 51. How many children? One. Two miscarriages. Yeah, well, y'all uh, have to ask you, I know. Anybody in here that understand God don't have to ask you no questions? Huh? They know. 
But I'm just telling you, I don't have no more privilege than you. I came up just as stupid and ignorant with a stupid mother. And then I learned this on my own. Because what God gives you can never leave. Hmm? Ain't no ugly people. Especially you mothers. Ain't no ugly children. Well, show me an ugly adult and we can trace that back to the crib. <laughs> you live in a house or apartment? A house. There's a leak in the roof. Have it been fixed? Not yet. Okay. That's all. Don't, don't, you know. All of you have this power, but you niggas so busy trying to learn a new dance and sing the blues. You know how stupid you got to be to sing blues? My baby done left me. You niggas be saying that when you're nine years old. You ain't even met her. And you talking about she left you. Blues. Some nasty blues. Why you want to say negative stuff? I call you a nigger, you get mad. I call you a billionaire, you smile. You can't be a nigger and you can't be a billionaire. Why y'all always accept the negative? Huh? You will never be a nigger and you'll never be a billionaire because you don't know how. Okay? Do you have a checkbook? Yes. Okay, when you get home tonight, pull it out and write you a billion dollar check plus. You hear me? Yes. And as long as you don't cash it, it's good. <laughs> you hear me? Huh? You hear me? As long as you don't cash it, that check is worth a billion dollars. And all you got to do is act like a billionaire, talk like a billionaire, and anything you want, God will bring it to you. You want to grow some, huh? You want to grow some cabbage? You plant a seed, huh? And then leave it alone. You want to grow corn? You plant a seed. That's what you do when you plant that. And then all at once, somebody will call you and say, girl, did you hear your name on the radio? You just won. Because hmm? you plant that. You niggas act poor because the white boy told you poor. Niggas walk around, I don't want no welfare. You got to be crazy. Who in the hell don't want free money? Huh? I can take a whole the night all the way around the world with me as long as I call that hole my secretary. It's a tax write off. Huh? You don't want no welfare on your way to play the lottery. Hmm? <laughs> My mama told me, you don't pray to God when you gamble. And y'all heard that crazy stuff, huh? My mama told me that. Well, about 10 years ago, when the lottery went up to 600,000, you talk about a nigga praying? I told God, my mama is so, and she didn't know what she was talking about. I've come to you to say, I want to win the $600 million and I'm not talking about 12 other people. I can win that without put. I want to win $600 million, God. And you know my heart. You know I'm going to treat everybody, right? I've got to. I can't lie to you. Now, I've got one little problem. I've been married to Leo now 56 years, okay? Now, no, nigga, I didn't say I was happy. Niggas always. <laughs> I'm talking to God who you can't lie to. I say, God, I've been married for 46 years. I don't think I'll leave. But I ain't never had $600 million. <laughs> I walk in the house and look at my wife and say, Little, what's, what's wrong with your back? Nigga, you know I've had this hump in my back ever since we've been married and had this club foot. I guess there's 600 million. Make me see things I didn't see. <laughs> and white folks, I go to, I think it's Budapest, two weeks from now. $250,000.
and I don't allow white folks to talk to me. Just like you go to Harvard or Yale, when the professor's talking, you can't talk. I demand the same respect out of the white folks. Hmm? You can't talk. So now here's where they get clever. You see, Mr. Gregory, uh, in an hour, the dinner's going to start. That's what we pay you for. But there's a handful of us who would like to just talk to you before. Now, most of you niggas be happy. Oh, I don't want to talk to me. No. I said, about what? I said, what's the number one thing on your mind right now? And I get into my ghetto stuff. I said, well, what bees on my mind? Because I'm 85 years old, and I try to wonder why every high school has a bound vinyl, and then they disappear. Have you seen albinos? Ain't no albinos in here. I'm on planes every day. You never see albino on the plane. I never seen albino in a movie. I want to know where do albino go after high school? Cracker, since y'all know everything. <laughs> You ain't never heard a woman call and say, Albino rape me? They'd be easy to catch. I speak in jails all over the world. Never see Albino. And you never have never seen one till you heard it tonight. Now you say, you know what? I ain't never seen Albino. But if a cracker asks you that, you try to make it. Oh, I was with one the other day. All I said to the white woman is, where are the albino? <laughs> she hurries up and gets to another subject. <laughs> well, what's the second thing on your mind? I said, I'll be 85 years old this year, and I want to know how come I ain't never seen a baby picture. <laughs> and this cracker, listen to this. They always want to be smart. It's because you urban. I'm urban. I've seen the baby crocodile. I've seen the baby elephant. I've seen the baby gorilla. I want to know why I've never seen a baby pigeon all day. And when I see a pigeon, they always on that electric wire. Pigeons been here billion years when there wasn't no electric wire. Where did they sit there? You ever thought about lying to white folks? No, you niggas always want to tell the truth. I swear, I swear. <laughs> Lie to them. <laughs> they looking for Malaysian airline? You know where it is? It's in my backyard, cracker. <laughs> That's all. Can I see it? No. Ask your mama. <laughs> You stupid enough to believe that airline can just disappear with all the satellites we got up there? You ain't never heard of a Greyhound bus disappearing, have you? <laughs> and when I open up my black airline, I know some of you black folks ain't got no money, so I'm gonna open up another airline for you. Call I almost caught a flight. <laughs> huh? You don't have to have no passport. You don't have to have no money, the plane ain't going nowhere. <laughs> you can kiss your wife or your husband goodbye, and they can stay there, because you ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Somewhere. The military. If you're gay, don't ask, don't tell. Y'all heard of that, right? That means if I'm gay, if they don't ask me if I'm gay, I can't tell them I'm gay. Huh? See what I mean? You think that just started? You ever see George Washington in them tight satin pants? <laughs> them high heel shoes? Them women's wigs? Huh? And women's blouses? And you think this just started? Huh? You crazy? Someone. So as we sit and look, 
today's headlines. That's all you see. All over the world. Wide scale. Headlines. Huh? Headlines. Well, what paper is that? Listen to this one. What paper? New York, New York Post, New York Post, okay, to hell. No, no, hold it. New York Post, what's the date? Fifth Saturday, July 16th. What's it say? World gone to hell. The world, they send it there. That quack act like they didn't do it. <laughs> world gone to hell. What's the date, what's that paper? Saturday, July 16th, Turkey is battlefield in a coup attempt. New York Times. That's all they're talking about today. Huh? Talking about today. Let's stay right there. Okay. Dr. King. This is the operation that killed King. Military. I had a copy for these thugs that's going to do and have it. This is military out the Pentagon. Not no damn ignorant white boy. Listen to this. April 27, 1968. Slow, slow, slow. April 27, 1968. Subject. After action report. That was the code number. After action. Yes. What? Civil dis disorder operation. March 28th. No, excuse me. April 12th, 1968. Uh, Wait a minute. You missed March the what? Uh, 28th. Yeah. Uh, March 28th. Uh, excuse me. March 28th through April 12th. They killed him on the 4th. But they went in there on March the 28th and stayed to the 12th in case somebody saw something they wasn't supposed to see. Mm -hmm. right. Go ahead now. Where'd they come from? The attached after action report covering the civil disorder operation. Madden Spike, March 28th through April 12th. Go ahead. You see where they came from. Wait, I'm no, sorry. Go again. It's forwarded. Per the requirement of uh, its uh, initials, USAITC. Go ahead. O P I N. No, no. They'll tell you where they came from. Right under there. For the commander, and it's from uh, F J Rose, Captain Adjutant. Go uh, ahead. And uh, that just say official use. That's it. They don't say what division they from. In what state? Uh, no, I no, no, sir. Never on this page. Never on this page. Oh, 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 don't move. Yeah, I got See, these glasses don't count. These are my money glasses. <laughs> right there! Hear this. No, no. Stop laughing and hear this. Huh? Right there. All right, so it's commanding general. Wait, hold it. All right. Hold it. Okay, my fault. You, commanding general, U.S. Army Intelligence <laughs> Command. This attention, ICEO from Fort Oliver, Maryland. Maryland, right here. Huh? That's where they came from. And you niggas live here and don't even know it. Huh? Read it again. <laughs> Subject after action report, civil disorder operation, March 28th. No, no, I mean just the, where they came oh, okay, from. From the commanding general, U.S. Army Intelligence Command, Fort Oliver, Maryland. That's the team they sent in to kill him. Okay, and they sent them there day before, and it was 13 different groups huh, to take him out. Okay, now somewhere when you stop and think, 
And for all you black folks that don't understand your children with their pants below their butt, let me tell you something. You worried about them on the crack, huh? More you old niggas will die in the next 24 hours because you put the salt and sugar then these crack folk will die next year. Time Magazine showed you what kills you, nigga. And when you get up in the morning, you got to take seven different prescriptions before you can eat bacon. Follow them young niggas. They don't take nothing from me to cry. But you think you so smart and don't understand God, I'm going to say this again. Black men, black men, huh? It's four percent of America's population. Hmm? Eighty-two percent of prostate cancer death is black men. Mm -hmm. And you haven't thought about how can I just be four percent? I'm not going to do that. Yes, sir. How can you be four percent? And 82% of prostate cancer death is you. But you don't discuss it. That white boy that stripped you of your manhood and you think you can get it back in the woman's vagina. That's a violation. God said, nigga, I made you a man. You let them take it from you. Now you won't try to get it back. Black women, 6% of American population. 98% of fibroid tumors is black women, and the next highest amount is Jewish women. What's your gotten in common? That they had. And you old black folks in here know you never heard of fibroid tumor till these niggas start putting perms on they had to undo something that God did. Huh? That's what it's about. Somewhere. And I can tell you, because I used to be like you. Huh? How many of y'all know I ran for I'm showing you this here because you won't see what's going to happen next week. How many of y'all know I ran for president? 1968. Huh? And had I won, I'd have asked for a recount. Right? You white folks have messed up the country. Now you think I'm spreading that out? <laughs> How white folks teach you to be ashamed of eating watermelon when God made watermelon? <laughs> How can you be ashamed? Had I won the first thing after I got sworn in, I would go back to the White House and dug up that rose boy and planted me a watermelon back. <laughs> And I had, had a press conference which would have made more niggas mad than white folks. I see there'd be no white folks in my cabin. And I just see them getting preachers and niggas to come up and say, I wasn't talking to you, nigga. I just talking to white folks. <laughs> so don't let them come to get you down to me. And there'll be no nigga in my cabin that can read or write or went past the third grade. That's what you deserve. And ain't nothing you niggas can say because I'm the president, not you. <laughs> so I say to them white folks, Trump just announced his vice president. I'm going to say, well, now that I'm president, here's my secretary of defense, my cousin, Jabo Jones. <laughs> Nigga can't read, can't write, stay drunk all the time. And I just see them white folks on 60 Minutes now. Uh, now that you're the secretary, what are you planning on doing about defense? He said, first I'm going to fix it, then paint it. <laughs> no, this, no, 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 I guess it's good. Now I want y'all to hear this as you listen to this election coming up. I ran for president November the 4th, 1968. 
for what page is that? Can you see it? Wall Street. Listen to this good. Wall Street Journal. Wall Street Journal. This is this white boy's Bible. Yeah. November the 7th. Wait, hold it. Mm -hmm. Wall Street Journal. It ran on Friday. The election was Tuesday. Friday. Yes. Headlines. November 7th. Election computer booths give Gregory 9 million votes. The subject, uh, subject is this. some inaccurate data. Wait, hold it, hold it, hold it. Mm -hmm. They gave me 9 million votes in the state of Pennsylvania because what they was hooking up for reading, somebody messed up and gave it to me. That's the chief system. That's why Trump can come up with that. You would see nobody vote for him. Huh? This little cracker out of what was it? Uh, yeah. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. No, no. The cracker that's running for president. The one from New Hampshire. Okay? Ain't nobody ever heard of him, but they convinced you and ignorant white folk he can raise four hundred million dollars. <laughs> and where he getting his money is the ice cream folks. Tom, what's it, Jerry? Yeah, Ben and Jerry. They the ones sitting the money to do that. But y'all fall for anything because you think you know you don't know nothing. Huh? Nothing. Now listen. That first paragraph. Wall Street Journal. Some machines that just aren't to be believed. Just aren't to be believed. Take the big computer in New York that designed to complete results on Tuesday's election, general election. At one point early yesterday morning, the machine was crediting Dick Gregory, the comedian turned presidential candidate, with nine million votes. In nine the million votes! Huh? And the complete was shut down because it showed Dick Gregory as president elect. Now at the end of the paragraph over here, listen what this thug Walter Cronkite said. When it gets down to those crucial calls, in the, okay, CBS anchorman Walter Cronkite, Cronkite, after the errors were pointed out to him apologized for not questioning the figures, he said any fool should have known were out of line. That's how white folk cover up when they get caught. Huh? So y'all go on out and listen to the crazy. Now as we leave, I'll we'll show you something. Quick. Quick question. Chicago Tribune. Headline. What's it say? What's the date? Chicago Tribune, Friday, March 10th, 1978. Headline. Headline is FBI memo. Use use mob against the Who president. was in a telex for the Chicago Bureau to kill me? I got the telex for Johnson got it. Huh? What's he say? Late Daniel Hoover ordered the Chicago office of the FBI to develop measures to neutralize black comedian Dick Gregory. I'm still here. He did. <laughs> the most vicious organization in the history of the planet, and they couldn't kill me. And y'all walk around scared of them, and that God said, I put you here, yes. nigga. Yes. I'm your mother and father. Yes. You don't fear nobody. You never scared of him. Except this. That's what this is about. Except about this year. No more. You too. They can convince you that this nigga is taking guns, killing folks. Me, you, you. We're going to go tonight and kill some black folks. We don't know. But how come we ain't killing black women? 
Huh? How come? How come we're not killing black women? Because they steal an organ and a man's organ black is worth 10,000 more than a woman. And y'all don't even feel that. Here. Come here, You see that with them body parts? Oh, yeah. And the numbers? Oh, yeah. They got a chart of what your ass is worth. Listen. Twelve hundred dollars. I think this is for uh, the muscles in your shoulder. Yeah, they got a list. Just like you go to the supermarket, nigga. They and them drive guys. Oh, black oh, that's been killed. And all of them have head shots so they can fall the stop. And y'all come in here thank you. You hear me? You see it? The low one area is worth 1218 dollars. I've got no You see it? They used to sell us on the black side you now. Now, listen to me. Thank you, brother. Listen to me. Y'all remember? Oklahoma? The bombing? Remember? Remember what that little punk's name was? Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Y'all remember that, right? Timothy McVeigh. Hmm? And so we're getting ready to leave. They talk about that gay stuff. What, what page is that? British? BBC News. Headlines, listen. U.S. military pardoned Love. Slower and louder. U.S. military pardoned Love, not war. Did you hear that? Make love, not war. Listen to this now. The U.S. military investigated building a gay bomb. They're talking about a gay bomb that's already been made. They can drop it on a football stadium and in two minutes all oh, y'all are gay. And you think you know something about America? It's 12 years old, huh? And y'all walk around, you just like a Jew in Germany. You don't know what Hitler got like, huh? Thanks, huh? Now watch this here. Y'all saw the, uh, the water. Any of y'all see the movie that won the Academy Award this year? Huh? Microphone. Any of y'all see the movie that won the Academy Award this year? Huh? If you didn't see it, don't even act like you saw it. It's about Wall Street. Big Short. Big Short. You saw it. It came out two years before the movie hit. And at the end, they told this psychic, what's next? So he said, why? And six months later, you saw Flint. And none of these niggas that's supposed to be protected us went to court for genocide. Huh? And then the black woman huh, went into federal court about her child. And three weeks ago, they went in her house, shot her dead in the head. Her girlfriend was there, shot her dead. And you niggas don't even know that. Huh? And the white boy, that's the chemical engineer for the Flint Wallen Department, they went in his house because he got to testify and shot him dead. Huh? And y'all don't feel nothing. You don't know what's fixing to happen, but you're going to go home tonight with all you fat black women. 
So here, I used to be 400 pounds. I had no sympathy for that. Huh? Ask me, what I got to lose weight? I said, just follow a four around. You ain't never seen enough fat hope. Huh? I'm not saying do what she do, but eat the way she eats. You want to see a fat black woman? Just go to the Black Baptist Church and sit next to the choir. <laughs> I don't know why I'm getting so fat. I ain't eating nothing. Someone. Someone. This is the hottest thing in the white communities. Hottest thing. I got the whole document. What's the headline say? The, the George Collard Greens. Okay. Form of cancer you got. You don't know that. But you don't cook them, huh? You don't cook them. You put your hand in the deep freeze, and the other one is scalding hot water, and neither one of them no good. So when y'all go home and cook that shit, you destroy everything in it. And then wonder why you so sick. This is okay. And so I say to my brother, they put these together, all I got to do is produce a body. <laughs> what happened in South Carolina at the church? It never happened. Who said that? You know? It never happened. Did you know that church is where Juneteenth was invented? Huh? Stars will do the 15th, 16th, and 17th. How that white boy know if I shoot him on the 17th, that's the last day? You ever been to a black church? You know, gambling well, you bring some strange nigga next to the preacher, the deacon will wear his ass out. So how a white boy is going to sit next to the preacher? <laughs> now, they say they was killed on the... 17, two days later, it's the 19. Listen to this good. Slow and listen to this good. From Newsweek magazine. U.S. to fast track $29 million to help Charleston shooting victim family. They gave those nine people, family, $2.5 million, and nigga, you ain't even heard of it. That was hush money. Huh? Read it again. The Justice Department, US. run by the President, sent in a check for what? $29 million to help Charleston shooting victim family. Okay. And y'all walked in here thinking you somebody, now you walk out knowing you're a piece of shit, and now maybe you can change. Okay? Now, I am out of here. I'm going to be out here. When y'all looking at the, all the folks here, they pay. See them? They pay to sell their goods. Hmm? And all y'all got to do is look at them. If you don't want to buy them now, never tell me about you broke, nigga. Hmm? Nigga, tell me you broke, I rob them. Because you know the nigga got some money. <laughs> Look at this stuff. And if you want to get it later, do that. And I'll be here. Man, how late? We got time to take pictures. Anybody want a picture take it? Yeah. I, I didn't ask you. I'm talking to the nigga got the table. Do it. We have time to take yeah, pictures. Yeah, we're going to um, actually come over and get aside some DVDs, some pictures and stuff. Right. We'll have a piece of you. Right there. Now, lastly, I want you to hear this. This is one of the most important books in the world. MIT Technical Review. Did you see that? Now, this is Massachusetts Institute of Technology. What do it say? We can now engineer the human race. We can now engineer, and it don't look like you, nigga. That's, that's
They didn't say we're about to. They say we can. Huh. You see it. Fuck it. When y'all go home and tell you they don't need to stay it. Huh? Just understand there's something up there that don't listen to this stuff. When you say honky, you wouldn't say honky in front of a white dog. Because you don't know what honky means. Prostitution is for the benefit of white men. I had a CBS report that you mean black men? Don't buy prostitutes. Man, me and her was in the slave tent together. She didn't have a job and I didn't have a job. The pussy was free. <laughs> you hear me? What you gonna pay me with? I ain't working. The benefit of prostitutes. When I went to college, the biggest poor house, 40 miles away, was Maul Hatchet, a black woman. And niggas couldn't come. That's what learned Richard Pryor crazy. Y'all know the story. His grandmother ran the whole house and his mama was a whore. And after he got big and he went around the world, the niggas got depressed. And so right now, Baltimore, if they had the Worldwide Mass Convention, the whole house would be halfway between here and D.C. so white folks can't be seen. And so when you pull up with them in the car, what do you do? Honk your horn. Honk, honk. That's where the word comes from. That's where the word comes from. That's why they call honkies. And they don't call a woman honky. It's a man. And you don't know that. But you think you know everything. So again, I just say to this brother here, and thank you all for coming out in the rain. And just look through the, and whatever y'all want me to sign, I'll be back there doing it. Okay? I love you. God bless you. Give it up, give it up. Brother Dick Gregory. Living legend, and I met today. Brothers and sisters, we're going to hope we're going to close out the way we do the reality speech. We're going to close out this event. However, you can still stick around. Professor Griffin's here. Dick Gregory.